Adventures on the Page, and today I'm doing another tag video. I This is my first ever, like, sp I was specifically tagged by another channel to do, and I was tagged by Jessica and Christina over at Game of Tomes, and I'm beyond thrilled that they tagged me. Um, this was originally done, I didn't even tell you guys the tag, oh my goodness, this is the Reader, the Reader Problems book tag which was originally created about by About to Read. I will link both channels down below. And let's go ahead and get started with the questions. Question one is you have 20,000 books on your TBR. What do you decide to read next? Um, first of all, I would probably hide from having that many books on my TBR. Second of all, I'm very much a mood reader, so whatever I'm in the mood for is what I will read next. So, although something like... Ugh, yeah. I kind of have a system now on my Goodreads that I think would help with this. So I have my Goodreads TBR list into two TBRs. There's Want to Read, which is like their generic TBR book or TBR list, which is I use it as just books I'm kind of interested in. Like if I ever get around to, I would really like to read these. And then I have my TBR definitely. And these are books I'm most interested in. And I add books that I really want to get to, that I want to highlight and make sure that I can, sorry, that I can make sure I can find them on that TBR. So I'd probably do something similar. And then I would, depending on what I'm in the mood for, try to find something that fell in off that list. Question number two is you are halfway through a book. You're halfway through a book and you're just not loving it. Do you quit or do you stay committed? Now... My, my answer is it depends. Um, sometimes I'm just not in the mood for the genre or the characters, but I know it's a book I'm going to love. So I usually technically quit it for the time being. I set it aside and don't DNF it because DNF is, means I'm never going back to it for me. I just set it aside to go back to later because it's a book that I am definitely very interested in. It just wasn't the right fit at the right time. So I guess it's the answer is kind of both. I mean, it really depends on why I'm not loving it, so. Question number three is, the end of the year is coming and you are so close yet so far away from your Goodreads challenge. Do you try to catch up and if so, how? Um, I probably wouldn't try to catch up. I don't want to put that stress on me. I put a really random, like, Goodreads reading challenge on my Goodreads. I just pick a number that I think is doable for me and if it's not that year, then it's just not that year. Um, cause I don't want to like either read books that I'm just not in love with cause they're short or like get through them faster. Like I do read graphic novels. So I mean, that is definitely helpful and I would probably, I read audiobooks and that definitely helps like reading more books because like I have a half an hour drive to work and a half an hour drive back. So I have like an hour round trip drive, sometimes longer depending on traffic. So I listen to an audiobook during that time. I can't read because I have to be driving. So that definitely helps. Um, like I said, I read graphic novels and those are fairly short sometimes. So that definitely helps as well. But I wouldn't push myself to finish a, a reading challenge just because something might have happened that year that was either really awesome or really negative and I just couldn't get the reading done. Number four is... The covers of a series you love do not match. How do you cope? Um, not well. Um, I usually like them to be the same style for the most part. Every like It really depends on how much I love the series. It's my favorite series. I want them all to match. Um, and I want them all to be the same size. But I'm also really broke like all the time. So I can't really afford to be buying multiple copies of a book just to get ones that I like. Um, so it really depends on how much it bugs me and I just cope by griping about it to my best friends. Number five is everyone and their mother loves a book that you really don't like. Who do you bond with over your feelings? Probably my two best friends, Jenny and Tia. I've They've featured on a, some, a few of my videos before and although they probably haven't read the book, they might have because I do shove books in their face um I would just kind of complain to them about why I don't like it and everything like that number six is you're reading a book and you are about to start crying in public how do you deal 
depends on where I am in public. Um, because like I said, I listen to audiobooks and sometimes I can do that at work. So if I'm at work, luckily I'm in a little kind of, I have like wall so I can kind of hide it. Um, I drive, so that's fine. Um, but I also can't really read in public as much anymore because usually if I'm out in public, it's because I'm doing something. Like I didn't, I'm not just like, I don't take the bus or the train or anything like that. So there's not really time for me to read in public and it's not really the greatest to just bring a book everywhere you go anymore when you're an adult. So I guess I either let myself cry or I switch to something else. So like if I'm listening to an audiobook and I'm about to start crying, I might turn on a TV show or something else instead. All right, so number seven is a sequel of a book that you love has just come out, but you've forgotten a lot of the first book because it's either been a long time or whatever. Do you reread it? Do you skip the sequel? Do you look it up on like spoilers? Um, for me, it really depends. I feel like that's going to be my answer for a lot of these, but first of all, it really depends on the series. If it's a series, I reread books anyway. So if it's a series I, I would be willing to reread, I will just reread it. Um, if I'm not as interested in the second book as much anymore, then I'll just skip it or just have the first one and be done with it. Um, I Or I will look up like spoilers or reviews or discussion about it. I usually look up, um, depending on the book, sometimes like book club questions because those questions will help for the book will help kind of like make me remember things by reading the questions and seeing how I would answer them. Um, so I've done that before. Number eight is you do not want anyone, absolutely anyone, borrowing your books. How do you let them know? Well, I guess the easiest way is not to tell someone that you own the book if you don't want them to borrow it. Um, I haven't done that because I am fine bar letting people borrow books. I honestly don't know how to answer this because usually... Because, like, all the people I would let borrow a book are people I really trust with my books. Um... They know how I feel about my books, so I guess just don't lend to anyone you're not comfortable. That doesn't answer it, but like how to tell them no is just don't let them know you own the book. And if they saw you reading it, say you borrowed it from a friend or got it from the library, because then that's what they can do. Number nine is reading ADD. You have picked up and put down five different books over the last month. How do you get over your reading slump? Um, this happens to me so often. So usually what I'll do is I always have a book I have to read for book club. So I'll just continue. I usually listen to that one. I'll just continue listening to it. Um, sometimes I'll read less likely graphic novels. What I often do though is actually reread an old favorite book. Um, something that I know I love just to kind of help me get back into the mood of reading. Um, so my go-to is usually a Tamara Pierce book, but then there's so many different aspects in each book that I figure out what is really keeping my interest in the book at the time. So like, is it the fantasy or the magic system? Is it knights or is it the mystery? Is it like, what is it that is really interesting me in the book? And then I will kind of use that as a jumping off point to find other books to read. Or sometimes I just let myself have the slump and I'll just watch TV instead. Number 10 is there are new books coming out that you are just dying to read. How many do you actually buy? Not many. Um, I'm more likely to buy them as an ebook than I am as a physical book or as an audiobook. Um, just because I only really want to own the books that I absolutely love and want to reread often. So I'm kind of calling down my bookshelves. Um, and I have a habit of buying books when they first come out when I'm really interested in them, but not being in the mood to read them. And so then they sit on my shelves for months or years. And what's the point in that? So I usually don't. I don't buy many. Um, even if I know I'll absolutely love it. Just because... I won't get to it right away. 
Number 11 is after you bought the books that you just can't wait to get to, how long do they actually sit on your shelf before you get to them? This, once again, is a really, it depends. I am a massive mood reader and so I can buy, so like my favorite genre is fantasy, but I haven't really been in the fantasy mood lately. So I own all these fantasy books that I just bought, like The Poppy War and The Tiger's Daughter, and I am super excited about them and really want to read them. But every time I start them, I just stop reading them. I just set them aside to wait for later. Um, so it really just depends. There are some books that I've had on my shelf for a couple months. There are some books I've had on my shelf for years, and it's not good but it really depends i also buy books cheap books like kind of on a whim like 99 cent books and sometimes i get to those sooner just because they're a lot easier reads or less complex and they're just kind of what i need at that time so it depends that is all the questions like i said i will link game of tomes video down below as well as about to reads video the creator of this if you want to do this, I'm tagging you guys. I don't know who else to tag. Usually I tag Game of Tomes to do things just because they're one of the few booktubers I've actually had kind of conversations with. Um, so I feel comfortable tagging them. So I don't know who to tag. I would like to see Megan from Tome Infinity do this. This would be a really cool thing to see her, um, really interesting to see her an answers. Um, but other than that, if you want to do it, you are tagged. Let me know some of your answers down below. How do you, how long does it take you guys to get to books that you've just bought or bought a while ago? And do you guys kind of plan your reading more than I do? Um, but until the next video, ta-ta for now.